<laughs> okay, dude, you ready? I know words, I have the best words. What's up guys, my name is Dakota. So a couple weeks ago, me and Koi Fresco did a Q&A video here on my channel and I'll leave the link in the description in case you wanna watch it. And I told you guys, hey, if you want to ask us a question or ask me a question in this particular case, then leave a question in the comment section below and I'll answer it in a future video. Well, fast forward to the future. Here we are, we're in the future now and this is that video. Koi is here in the form of my love. And if you'd like to be in the next Q&A video, leave a question below and uh, I'll answer it. So this first question comes from Tiffany Dent. She says, can you still be a spiritual person even if you suffer from depression or PTSD or anxiety, etc.? Of course you can be spiritual regardless of what circumstance you are currently in. Things like depression are good for your spiritual path. They're not good they're not, it's not good when you're lost in it, you know, you don't want to be lost in your depression, but it's good in the sense that you are in a place where you can really do some work on yourself. Does that make sense? Like you are in a very vulnerable place where you are being exposed to the things about yourself that need attention, that need your loving awareness, that need to be flowered so that you can blossom and become a higher version of yourself. So I think what was useful for me was to recognize that I'm not these temporary things because I've dealt with depression before. You know, I just made a video about it. My last video was actually about uh, depression. And um, I think what was useful for me was to not identify with that because that's not who I am. I'm not my depression. I'm not my sadness. I'm not my insecurities or my anxiety. Um, I'm not the limitations of my, of my ego and of you know, all these boundaries that I've set up myself, given, you know, the way I was raised or just my life experiences. I'm not these things. You're not these things. We are literally uh, a part of something very crazy. You know, just life itself, existence is such, so insane. Tune into that insaneness and realize that you are here. You are in this happening. Like whatever this, whatever this is, whatever the fuck is going on, however we got here, we're here, and um, tune into that. You know, whenever I find myself sort of focusing on just petty things that ultimately don't matter and that don't, you know, it's not like where my awareness needs to be focused on. And when I catch myself thinking about these things, or a way to catch myself out when I'm thinking about these things is to realize like, we're just floating on a little rock in space right now. All these, all these little problems are so silly in the face of truth. And truth is that we are just in the universe. We're in space right now. Basically what I'm trying to say is yes, you are a spiritual being no matter what. All this that is happening is spiritual. When you tune into the moment, you know, when you get lost in the moment, that's what like a spiritual awakening is, is being thrown into the vastness of the moment, merging to the universe, becoming one with everything, becoming who you actually are. So just become what you are. Let go of all these attachments to these to these belief systems and thoughts that you don't even agree with. You are more than those things. This next one's from Maria. She says, for someone that's a little bit older, in their late 20s with more responsibilities and can't just get up and leave because they have a home or an animal, career, school, all these different responsibilities to take care of, what advice would you give to them to still live a less materialistic life and experienced a fulfilled life? So there's sort of this, this misconception that you just need to give everything up. And I guess there are paths that say that you just need to give up all attachments to experience true liberation. But I don't fully agree that you should just give everything up. I think we are here to to, we're in the material world, you know, here we are. I think that it's not a bad thing that we need to totally reject. I think we just need to not identify with it. Just don't lose yourself. In it. Wherever you are is perfect. You are okay where you're at. You don't need to do anything. The only thing you need to do is to stop attaching yourself to the idea that you need to do anything. 
you are perfect. So just be where you're at, sit quietly. That's all you need to do to feel connected, to be connected. You are connected, you don't need to do anything. But if you want to experience that connectedness, what works for me is to sit silently and to stop attaching myself to these thoughts. Because when these thoughts come, usually we just hold on to them. We try to grab onto these thoughts and then that creates more thoughts because we can't really grab onto anything because there's nothing there. These thoughts are kind of just like clouds. They're like clouds. You can't grab onto a cloud. So acknowledge them as being like clouds and just let them float by without judgment. The same way you look at a cloud in the sky. You don't look at a cloud and say like, ooh, that one looks not so well up there. That's not a good cloud. I don't like this one. You know, we just look at these clouds and we say, oh, it's just a beautiful happening. So allow your thoughts to be just a beautiful happening, just something that is happening to you, just floating by in the sky of your mind. Don't attach yourself to it. Just allow it to flow. Question number three comes from Laura, and she asked me, what am I gonna do after I get home from India? Uh, if you didn't know, I'm going to India, and I made a whole video about it, and I'll put the link in the description, but I'm leaving for India in about two weeks, and I'm going for six weeks, and then I'm gonna travel throughout a couple other countries after that. Uh, I'm really excited about it. I'm gonna work really hard. I'm gonna vlog like crazy. I'm gonna try to vlog daily, if not daily, near daily. And I'm just gonna try to get up into some crazy stuff. I'm gonna try to find myself in some life-changing situations and, and hopefully bring you along for the experience as much as I can. Uh, there's not too many travel vlogs about India. So I'm excited to be one of the first people to really get some good ones up there and to get some of like the not so touristy places and get some of the real off the road rugged adventure places for you guys because Whew. So what are my plans for when I return? Um, just working really hard, really uh, bumping up my store, stay happy, stay weird, and uh, making some, a lot of videos for you guys, making more t-shirts for you guys. If you'd like to support me in my trip while I'm throughout, while I'm in India, you can um, go to stayhappystayweird.com and buy a t-shirt. It really means the world to me, I really appreciate it, and it helps me a lot, especially during this time right now in my life. So yeah, I'm just gonna stay focused, uh, maybe move out to LA with Koi for a little bit and just make some videos and make some moves. I don't know, I don't know where, the, where, where life's gonna take me. I'm just kind of riding the wave of whatever this is. Whatever this is. <laughs> so, who knows? This next question comes from Isabella and it's a good question because it's something I struggle with. Advice on procrastination and being lazy. I am a lazy person and I don't like to admit it and I've really been trying to work on it and trying to do more. Um, I work hard during the summer for Warp Tour and then I find myself being lazy the next few months and I'm doing my best to break that cycle. And I think what's working for me is just changing my environment. I get caught up in these habits and these routines and I just sort of do them. And I'm so comfortable in them that it's just like, it's too easy to just like, stay on that on that path and like it's hard to break it but what I've been doing is breaking it I just been breaking the breaking that like I'm forcing myself to be a little bit more active and like I've been cooking three meals a day for myself which is something I I haven't done in the past and um, I've been like walking there's a gas station just outside my neighborhood I've been walking to the gas station and just like playing with my dogs more and just being more active like just these little things have helped me break this uh, this cycle of sort of procrastination or laziness that I find myself in all the time and once I get going I'm like I'm like a just a snowball that's rolling down a mountain you know I just my momentum grows the more and more that I go so just break the patterns break your habits that that are keeping you from uh, doing the things that you want to accomplish because you feel better anyway, you know? And we get sad when we're lazy and we get depressed when we're stagnant. So when we can just move, just move your body, go outside and like just do something, write, play guitar, whatever it is that you do. These are things that I do that really help me. You know, I'm just trying my best to just keep going. Just keep swimming as Dora, Dora, Dory. Just keep swimming as Dora the Explorer once said. As Dory said from Finding Nemo, the best movie of all time. Just keep on 
swimming through this ocean of life and you'll be all right. Don't be a rock stuck in the water. Be like Dory. I don't know what I'm talking about. This next question is gonna be the last question. It's from Arthur and he asked, what's the best way to introduce spirituality to a group of friends? This is a really cool question. And I think the best way, at least for me, is to like just talk about the universe. You know that feeling you get when you talk about the universe and you're just like, oh fuck, what the hell is going on? How did I get here? It's so beautiful. I'm so excited on life. You get high on life. Spirituality is about cultivating that feeling and living through it because that's our natural state. They call this in Hinduism, Sat Chit Ananda. It means existence, consciousness, and bliss. This is our true state. So when you're lost in the sauce of the moment, that that is who you really are. And I think so when we talk to our friends about these things like the universe, how do we get here? What is God? Who are you? You know, when we, when we talk about these questions, this is spirituality. This is satsang. This is figuring out who we are through the expression of the other, through your friends. And you know, not everyone likes to talk about Buddhism or Hinduism or Krishna or any of this kind of stuff. So it's nice to start off with something that everyone can resonate with. And that's like, fucking hell. Here we are on this rock. You know, we just, we just kind of woke up in these bodies one day, emerged from the depths of some vagina portal into this physical dimension. And ever since then, we have been slowly dematerializing back to which we came from. And again, if you would like to support me, stayhappystayweird.com. That link is below too. My Patreon is below. I feel so overwhelmed right now and positive about life, and I'm happy to share this with you guys. I'm happy to, I'm just happy to be here on Earth, and I don't know. I don't know how any of this is happening, but it is, and I'm embracing every second of it. Uh, Hare Krishna, make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. Boing! Thank you.